Hello everyone, if you can hear me, we'll be starting in just a moment. Thank you so much for joining us. The webinar will begin shortly. Well, hello everyone and welcome to 50 Ways to Wow Today, it is unbelievable. Thank you so much for joining us. Now, I have just a couple of housekeeping items to talk to you about. This is Sandy Giroux, by the way. And I wanted to let you know that there's a chat box you can see up at the top of your screen. If you'd like to share your wow ideas as we go along, we'd love to hear them and we're going to capture that chat and we'll get it to everybody later on by email. So you can all share in everybody's ideas. Also, I wanted to tell you that we are going to have a jam-packed hour. Of course, I had to pick. 50 ways to wow your others and those of you who are music lovers know that that's a play on Paul Simon's song 50 ways to leave your lover so we're going to go fast on some of these but you'll get a handout via email later on as well afterwards and there's going to be a replay that you'll have access to so don't worry and don't try to capture notes furiously now if you don't want to you'll be able to see the handout and you'll also be able to hear the replay later on so, since we have 50 ways to share in 60 minutes, of course I had to pick 50 ways and not necessarily, you know, eight ways a week by the Beatles. I couldn't pick an easy song like that, but I wanted to give you a lot of ideas. So, here we go. Let's run right with it. Now, the first eight tips are actually going to match the song, so you'll be able to recognize it if you know the words. The very first one is going to be Slip Out the Back, Jack. And this means that you don't always have to do something that is recognized. We can do something anonymously and it can create an incredible wow. The recipient doesn't necessarily need to know who the donor is. For example, I have some friends who actually do something every Christmas time and what they do is they tell people they tell their families to go and buy presents. Now they get their children involved, they get a lot of people involved, and what they do is they go and they find a family that needs those presents. They find a day, either Christmas Eve or the day before, when those people are not going to, they know they're going to be home and they're not going to be at their front door. They load up the porch, knock on the door, and run away. What a great way to get your children involved in doing something great. So that's a wonderful idea. Do something anonymously to help someone else. Now the second line of the song is make a new plan, Stan. And what I mean by this one is that you can help someone else achieve their dreams. Maybe their plan has stalled. Maybe they need one little piece of the puzzle that will help them enable all of the other pieces and you have the information they need or a contact connection or some specialized knowledge that will help them accomplish some part of it. So help someone else achieve their dream and you can make a wow for them, their lives, their families, everything. Now number three in the song is you don't need to be coy Roy and I have a great story for this. This means that you should share someone's accomplishments with people's loved ones and what you can do is you can um, you can make sure that, listen to my friend Dave, I'm sorry, I just got distracted because I'm running my own webinar here and 
the I wanted to make sure that it was actually the the microphone was on and I am so thank you for bearing with me for just a second okay so you don't need to be coy Roy what's happening here is my friend Dave Timmons and some of you on the call already know about Dave they know you know who he is and he gave me a great idea that a mentor of his shared with him and that was that when he had a great team member he didn't give a gift card and greeting card to her directly but he sent it to her family and told them how awesome she is you know how many of us do a great job at our jobs and our families have no idea what we do it's amazing to me how many times that happens but what he did was he sent the card and gift card to them told them what an amazing employee she was and then asked them to give the gift card to her in his place how great is that and what an added wow for her family to be able to see how great she is now my next one is this number four just listen to me now this means that you can offer to train or coach or mentor someone else you have knowledge that people need to know. You've probably got experience and expertise that you take for granted, but others can share in it and benefit greatly. So figure out what you're great at and help someone else with it. Now, sometimes it's a knowledge or skill. Sometimes, oh, wait a minute, I'm seeing some messages here. Let me just make sure that I do have... Yeah, the, the microphone is on. I'm seeing some different messages, so I just want to make sure you're all hearing it. So, um, anyway, I see that you are seeing the. This is a brand new piece of software. It's called Webinar Jam, and it is awesome. They've thought about just, er, just about everything, but it is kind of. Um, it's kind of an unusual situation. They use Google Hangouts to get this. So hopefully you're doing all right and everybody is able to see the, and hear the, um, the webinar. So let me continue. So if you offer to train, coach, or mentor someone, I've got to tell you, one of the things that I'm finding is that just people doing research for me, like my marketing director, Cindy Lynch, who is probably on this call right now, on this webinar. She is unbelievable. She's done so much great research for me to help me with this. Uh-oh, wait a minute. Other people are saying hi, and they're in. I'm just making sure I can see this. Oh, I am so sorry, you guys. I just want to make sure. Okay, I'm seeing hi, Sandy. Can you all just say, yes, I can hear you? Just type it into the chat if you can hear me. So just go ahead and say that. We'll halt the webinar just for a second. And make sure, doing great can hear you very well. Great. <laughs> Thanks, Deb. I appreciate it. All right, I'm going to be looking for a couple of other messages, and then I'm going to keep on going. So let me keep moving forward, making sure that you can actually see and hear everything on this webinar because we have some really great ideas to share with you. All right, here we go. I'm going to keep on going. Log back in. People are working well. Good. So that was number four. Offer to train, coach, or mentor someone, or even just help them, listen to them, let them commiserate, make sure that they have the research that they need, and give them back some time. Great. Yes, yes, yes. Everybody's hearing me. Yay. Thank you, you guys. <laughs> Love you guys. Oh, and I just have to tell you, all my friends, my speaker friends, my personal friends, my clients, everybody who's here, thank you so much for joining me and helping me make sure that you can hear everything. Let's go on to number five so we don't lose any more time. All right. Next one is hop on the bus, Gus. Now, what I mean by this one is that you can pay for someone else's transportation to and from work for a month and include their parking and tolls. What a nice surprise this would be to give someone who has to incur this this cost every single month just to get to their jobs. Now it's not a big item for a company to do and even if you're a friend of theirs if you want to chip in towards it get some friends together and do it what a nice little surprise that would be to say hey let's ease up the stress of your ride right and let's just help you get there so hop on the bus Gus and pay for somebody else's transportation to and from work for a month now, number six is you don't need to discuss much. 
what I'm talking about here is you can hold back a biting comment or a little bit of criticism. You know, when somebody does something wrong, they're probably beating themselves up pretty well about it. And if there's any way that you don't have to say something, sometimes the best gift of all, the best wow of all, is the unexpected gift of grace when things go wrong. So hold that comment back. Don't worry about saying something. If they've already got it, just let it go. Now, number seven is that you will just drop off the key, Lee. You could give someone a nice weekend away at a great resort. I mean, sometimes we all just need to get away and de-stress and decompress for a while. Just getting away from everybody and everything is a wonderful thing. So give them a nice weekend away at a great resort and let them have two days away from the world. Now, number eight is get yourself free. I love this one because what I'm talking about here is that you can volunteer to help someone for free. And it's even better if you can arrange opportunities for others to do so as well. For example, I don't know if you've seen the TV show Extreme Makeover Home Edition, but I saw an episode once. It was fantastic. Now, this is a time when they get together because there's a very deserving family who needs a new home. And they build a home in one weekend out of donated items and donated labor. And there was one episode, I remember, where the owner of a construction company got all of his people together and had them volunteer to build the home. Now these big burly guys, these construction workers, and all of their admin staff came out to help. They had to give up their entire weekend to come out and work for free. And yet, at the end of the episode, these guys that you would never think would choke up about much were choked up, came to the man who owned the company and thanked him for offering them the opportunity to help this family. You know, sometimes people really want to help out, but they don't know where to go or how to do it. If you can find a great cause or something you can do and you can arrange for others to help you, they will be grateful for the opportunity just to participate. Now, number nine, obviously we're out of lines to the song, but we're definitely not out of ideas. And I want to share this one with you. I love this one. Number nine is create a shareable joke. You can poke fun at something in your workplace that allows you to have a laugh with your customers and your coworkers. For example, I recently went to a new eye doctor and they had to dilate my eyes, which means that when you go out into the sunshine, you know, you need something to cover your eyes. Well, they sucked me right in. They made this big deal, the receptionist, the doctor, about, hey, you know, our most fun patients, our most appreciated patients, we always give them some really high fashion eyewear to go out of here with. So at the end of your test, we're going to give you a really nice piece of fashion eyewear. I believed them. And here's what they gave me. I fell off my chair laughing. Now, they had two choices when they had to buy these items. Obviously, they can't afford to buy something expensive for every single person that they have, uh, you know, an, an eye test for. But instead of getting embarrassed and saying, oh, I'm so sorry, we have to give you these cheap little things, they turned it around, created a joke, let us all have a laugh together, and it was awesome. I will never forget the way they let me have fun with them. So you know what? Don't get embarrassed about things. Find a way to poke fun at it and then have some fun with your customers and your coworkers. Now number 10 is to just call someone out of the blue. We all know this one, but how many of us actually do it when we think about it? You know, so call someone just to tell them that you're thinking of them or you miss them or anything at all, they will be wowed by the fact that you took the time to actually call them instead of just saying, oh, you know, I thought of you the other day, but I didn't do anything about it. Just call them and let them feel special. Now, number 11 is to go first. Now, this is a really important one. And you can apply this concept to just about anything, but I want to talk about one particular situation here, and that's to call someone who's waiting for an answer from you before they call you. 
I had this happen to me with a bank person one time. They needed to find out something about my account. They promised to call within the next couple of days. No call on the first day, but on the second day, around 3 o'clock, I got a phone call from this woman, and she said to me, Sandy, I don't have an answer for you, but I wanted to give you a call just to let you know I haven't forgotten about you. Wow! I mean, how many times, you know, you can raise your proverbial hand right here and say, yeah, I've had that happen to me where someone's promised me a call back and I never got it. So you know what? Don't let them think you're even remotely like someone who's going to be ignoring you and forgetting to call back. Call them, even if it's just to say, I have absolutely nothing new to tell you except one thing, I haven't forgotten about you. This is an awesome way to create wow experiences. Now, number 12 is to give someone a surprise gift. And this is part one. I love the picture of this sandwich. Not that anyone would actually want this, but you know what? Give someone something they wouldn't buy for themselves. I'd love this just for the wow factor at a party. But you know what? Sometimes you hear somebody say, I want that, but they wouldn't buy it for themselves because they feel it's a little frivolous. You know what? When you make sure that they really want it, not just to saying, oh, that's pretty cool, but really, I wouldn't want it, think of something that someone would want to do or want to have, and then give it to them. Just make sure they really do want it. Number 13 is part two to this, and that's to give someone a surprise gift, but give them something that they would buy for themselves. For example, what if you gave them a mundane item or pay for one of their monthly bills so that you can free up some cash for them and they can spend that money on something frivolous. By giving them that amount of money, you have been able to allow them to have a little bit of fun that they might not have been able to justify otherwise. What a nice wow. So give them something they would buy for themselves and let them buy something they normally wouldn't buy. Number 14 is don't get mad, get glad. You can respond to a frustrating or disappointing event with humor rather than anger. You know, make it a habit to respond this way. People will be shocked that you can find the humor in the situation rather than simply getting upset or berating them for it. And if you can continue to train yourself to respond this way, it will become a habit. And people will find it easier to be around you because they know you're not going to just blow up anytime things go wrong. I really think that that's one of the secrets as to why my hubby Bruce and I have recently celebrated our 31st anniversary. We laugh about almost anything. And you know what? There are times when I have to say to Bruce, oh, would you please just be serious for one minute? <laughs> but guess what? I really would rather have it that way than to have him say, would you please lighten up? Or rather have to say to him, would you please lighten up? So we laugh about a lot of things. Love it, love it, love it. Oh, and thanks, Beth. I can see you love that number 11. Great to know you're, these are connecting with you. Now, number 15 is do something unexpected for a coworker or a great or a group member. This is a fantastic story. Thank you so much. Congratulations on 31 years. Oh, and you did number 12 for your in-laws, Cindy. Great job. Here's a great story. I love this. You know, pay attention to what people that you know or who are in your association or your workplace need because here is a wonderful story. Uh, there's an organization that's called the Executive Assistance Organization, and they hold conferences called Behind Every Leader. I'm speaking at a couple of them this year, but one of their association members was in a horrendous accident at age 15 years ago and lost her leg. Now, she went without a leg for years and never felt the, you know, the sting of that. She adapted and coped until at age 27, after she'd had her first child, she attended a Behind Every Leader conference. Well, she was telling one of the attendees there that she was having a hard time keeping up with her child with just one leg. Well, they heard her plight, got the group together, created an online fundraiser, and guess what they raised? Sixty thousand dollars and enabled her to receive a prosthetic leg. No one could believe it. No one, she didn't even want to get too excited because she didn't think it would really happen. 
and you could see the excitement building online as they tracked her progress throughout the process. It was miraculous, and she is now going to be speaking at their conferences to thank the group and let them see her progress. If you want to see her video and her story, you can go to YouTube and, see, and search for Marina Ivy sends a message of appreciation to her BEL, Behind Every Leader, family. Awesome story. Get your co-workers, your church group, your community, anybody together, and maybe you can create a wow for one of your members who needs something unusual. Okay, now number 16 is to say something immediately. This is kind of like calling people out of the blue, but how many times do we see people do something great and we think to them ourselves, Boy, you know, I should say something to them, but oh, I'm kind of in a hurry, so you just keep powering down the hall or down the sidewalk, and you don't say anything, and then later it never comes, even though you plan to say something later. You know, this is an unreal thing. So many of us hear immediately when we do something wrong, but we don't hear at all when we do something right. So say something immediately to someone so that you don't let the opportunity go by and create a wow for them. Now, number 17 is to send a handwritten thank you note or other note of appreciation to someone. You know, we all know this, but still, none of us handwrite notes anymore. So be different. You know what the wow is here? It's easy to send an email, but it takes more effort, time, and cost. I mean, my goodness, just the investment of the paper, the envelope, and then the stamp is a big investment at this point, isn't it? So just by doing those things, you will wow someone because of all the extras you had to go through to do that for them. Number 18 is to give it back better than ever. Have you ever lent out something, a car, a pan, a tool, anything at all, and had it come back to you broken, in pieces, dirty, greasy, filthy, <laughs> or maybe you don't even get it back at all? Well, return a borrowed item in as good, if not better, condition than it was in when you borrowed it. That's the wow here. You know, my husband is a neat nick, huge, huge neat nick. And whenever he borrows something from somebody, he gives it back to them in better condition than when he got it. And it is a wow. He knows that if he ever, ever wanted to borrow something else from the people he's borrowed from in the past, they will always say yes. So be the wow. Give it back better than when you got it. Number 19 is to show you care about people's feelings, not just their job performance. You know, here's something that's great. Have a gift sent to someone who's having a tough day and do it that day. Maybe you can have it delivered or maybe you can even run out at lunch. Even just one flower, one Hershey kiss, one anything, a muffin, a cupcake, anything at all, a card on a day that someone's having that's difficult will be a welcome thing. Go out, put it on their desk when you come back while they're out at lunch and let them get surprised when they come back. You won't believe what just a tiny little thing like that can do for someone. And that brings me to number 20 which is, you know, number 19 is great. Show them you appreciate things other than their job performance but don't also forget to show them that you do appreciate their job performance. So have a gift sent to someone who's a stellar performer as well. Again, we don't always hear when we do things right or when we do things well, but we certainly hear about them when we're doing them wrong. So you know what? When someone's doing something right, don't wait for them, you know, their boss to get around to saying it or for their performance review hopefully to say something. Just do it impromptu and they will love feeling that my work is appreciated and someone notices. It's kind of like our spouses at home. You know, we know they love us, but it sure is nice to hear it once in a while. So number 21 is to 21 is to listen now and act later. This is a little play on what I just talked about, but this means that you make note of something that someone says they want and you store away the idea for later and then give it to them when they least expect it. Even if it's a thank you or whatever, just usually though this will be a nice little thing that someone says that they'd love to have. The wow here isn't that you got it, but it's that you heard, listened, remembered, and then took the time to go out and get it and give it to them later when they least expect it. So if you listen now and act later, you can create 
just as big or maybe even a bigger wow than if you gave it to them right away. Number 22 is to start a fun committee at your office. Now, you can plan regular fun and funny activities that everyone can join in and take part in. You know, you can focus on activities that will build teamwork and camaraderie, such as, you know, funny photo contests, name that baby, but you could also have get-together lunches, start a bowling team, a softball team, do things on holidays. Just think of small and large fun things you can do as a group to keep a focus on fun and team spirit and then do them. Don't wait and hope for fun things to happen during the day because without a focus on this you will never have it happen or at least not often enough for it to create a wow. Love the comments everyone that you're bringing in. I just, oh, I'm so excited about all the participation. Thank you so much. We'll capture all of these and get them to you later. Let's go on to number 23, which I hate to have to even Im include in here, but this is a wow. Walk your talk. When you profess something, follow through. Now, it is a little sad that this even has to be on the list, but so many people don't walk their talk nowadays that it's a real wow when you find someone who actually does. For example, here's a funny example of this in practice. Many of you who are entrepreneurs, or even if you're not, you might be joining leads groups for different things. And every time you join a leads group, you know, you're trying to get business. Well, I joined one, and at one of the leads groups, an attorney got up with a great elevator speech. He said, I know many people have a problem with getting attorneys to call them back. So if you need an attorney, call me. I'll call you back. Wow. He knew what one of the biggest problems in his, in his industry was, and he vowed to be different. So when one of my clients did need an attorney, I called this gentleman to make the introduction. And guess what? He never called me back. Ow. Can't even believe it. So, you know, what? You're talking, you'll create a huge wow, but if you talk and then don't walk it, it creates a huge ow. Now, number 24 is to do the right thing even when you think it doesn't matter. This is another one that has to be included here, and I want to talk about one specific incident. Many of us are on volunteer type boards and all kinds of things, and we have to volunteer our time and our effort. Sometimes people, though, get really busy in their paid jobs, and they let those other things slide. But if someone's relying on you, even on a volunteer board, and you think, oh, you know what, hey, I'm not getting paid for that. I'm sorry, I just have to pay attention to my real business, because you think it doesn't matter. It always matters, folks. What I want to put into your mind and have you share with others that, what if that's the only place that I ever see you? is when you don't do the right thing because you think it doesn't matter. Well, guess what? If that's the only place I ever see you, then how do I know that you will or even can do the right thing when it does matter? It always matters. So even if you can't do that job yourself, please try to find someone to fill in for you rather than dumping it on everyone else in the committee and having them have to do the right thing because you didn't. And I'm probably preaching to the choir with the people on these calls, but share that little tidbit with others because I'm sure you all know people who do this. Now, number 25 is to do the impossible. Now, obviously, we can't do the literally impossible, but sometimes what we think is impossible really isn't impossible. It's just difficult. So if you can do something that everyone said couldn't be done, you will be way ahead of the game. For example, oh, this is an amazing place. There's a place called Universal Auto Body, and it's here in Orlando, Florida. My husband and I have used it a couple of times, and well, I'll let these pictures do the talking. This is the lobby area at a body shop. Clean, neat, quiet, none of those, brrrr, you know, all those noises that you hear in the body shop usually. And this is a wow. They have artwork on the walls. And you might think, yeah, sure, Sandy. It's easy to do that in the customer areas. Well, because we told the receptionist how impressed we were with their organization, she asked if we wanted a tour of the shop. Well, who wants a tour of a body shop? But we didn't want to hurt her feelings. So we said, okay, fine, we'll take a tour of the shop. Here are the work areas of the shop. 
Have you ever seen gleaming clean floors in a body shop? Now, before I saw this, I would have thought that was impossible. But obviously, the man who owns the organization said, guess what? The impossible is only impossible until someone comes along and says that it's not. So you know what? Take a look and see, is it really impossible or is it just difficult so other people won't do it, but we can now, number 26 is to be humble. You know, humility is a highly prized quality in many cultures for very good reasons. My husband and I visited a high priest one time in Japan. And in Japan, there are not many people that he has to show respect to because he's so high up in Japanese society. And yet, when we went to his temple, where he was the high priest of the second oldest temple in Japan, I could not believe the respect that he showed to other people, even though he didn't have to. By showing respect to others and being humble about his position, he created a wow that I will never forget for the rest of my life. Because if we think about very many high-level people, and the way they behave, humility isn't one of the things that normally comes to mind. So the higher you go and the more power you have, the more humility you show is a bigger and bigger wow. Number 27, oh, I love this one, share funny stuff. There is so much out there that you can do. You can boost people's spirits by sending, of course, tasteful greeting cards and cartoons and funny quotes, etc., any, anything comical, but it's even better if it's personally relevant. For example, when I worked in Boston, I had a friend named Jenny, and she and I went to lunch every day, and very often we found ourselves shopping. But every time we went shopping for Jenny to buy clothes, she found absolutely nothing, and I found stuff and bought it. She was getting so frustrated, like, wait a minute, we're supposed to be shopping for me, and you keep buying stuff. Well, this was a running joke, and one day I found the perfect birthday card for her. The front of the card said this. I went shopping for your birthday today. And when you opened up the card, it said, do you like my new dress? <laughs> she fell on the floor laughing her head off. And 30 years later, we still laugh about that to this day. So you know what? Make sure that you have a laugh with people. Have funny jokes. Have all kinds of things that you can share with people, and you will create wows for them. Milton Burroughs says that laughter is an instant vacation. Create a wow by creating an instant vacation for people by just having a little laugh with them. Now, number 28 is even better. You can find lots of funny stuff, but you can also create funny stuff as well. For example, if you make light of a situation, you can prevent it from becoming too heavy. This story comes from my sister who works at a university, and in one department, their pencils were just absolutely disappearing all the time and they couldn't figure out who the heck was stealing their pencils now they had two choices again they could go in and they could write an email and chastise people or they could say you know hey stop stealing our pencils accusing people but instead <laughs> some creative person in their department created this with Photoshop they took a milk carton image and put the pencils on the milk carton okay now you can see this is what they looked like on the left when they disappeared <laughs> and on the right is an FBI age enhanced photo of what the missing pencils <laughs> may look Look like now and look at look at this underneath look for additional information on missing writing instruments in your daily college email if you can identify these pencils or any other missing writing instruments <laughs> report uh, report your information this is a little blurry because I got this from my sister um, that you may have to the National Center for missing and exploited office supplies 1-800 you can't be serious <laughs> This went viral, and guess what? After this email went out with this photo in it, they didn't have to chastise, they didn't have to accuse, their pencils stopped disappearing. So they made light of a funny situation, or they made it funny instead of making it awkward, and everybody responded. <laughs> I'm glad to see you're loving all of these <laughs> different ideas. These are some of my favorites, too. 
All right, now number 29 is to send coworkers a daily, weekly, or monthly inspiring message. I know we get a lot of things from a lot of people, but let me tell you, when you can send short, short quotes to inspire, photos, videos, and other items, they're usually welcome via email. They may get spammed out, you don't know, but you know what, if you try, I know my husband sends a lot of things to a lot of people, and some have said, hey look, and I can't read all of them, or I can't read the long ones, just send the short ones. And that's great. I mean, it's just amazing what you can do to inspire someone, and you never know what's going to hit them on that particular day. So you know what? Do something to send inspiring things to your people, even if it's just once a month, once a week, once every two weeks. Pick a time frame and do it. Now, number 30 is to wrap up a little tchotchke every day for a week and leave it on a coworker's desk. I mean, be careful that you're not showing favoritism, especially if you're in a leadership posi position. But these inexpensive and fun, cute little items, a candle, a stuffed animal, a little bag of candy, something, are great to receive. And it's even better when you get one, say, every day for a week. You could even set up the expectation by getting some empty little train cars or cut up an egg carton and leave the holes empty and then put a little gift in every day and make sure you put a little note that says leave this on your desk to get a surprise every day for every slot that's available here. It's just unbelievable what you can do to create a little, a little um, you know, fun for people during the day. I'm loving all of these comments. Thank you. Okay, number 31. I'll take care of that for you. How about if you offer to un, uh, run an errand or do a chore for someone else? How much of a godsend is it for us to get that little gift of time back because somebody went shopping for us, picked up an item, ran an errand, cooked a dinner and brought it over, uh, gassed up our car, whatever it is. And if you can get people together, maybe five people, and everybody does it, if it's a daily thing or everybody does a different thing for that person, you know, one day a week, one person a day is going to be quote unquote inconvenienced, but you can really do some great stuff and help someone out for an entire week by offering to run an errand for them. Of course, if you offer to fix their car or do something with their car, you may not want to do it if their car is in this bad shape. <laughs> I just had to throw that fun picture in. Okay, number 32. Do a role reversal. What if you make or bring coffee or tea or anything else to someone who usually brings it to you. What a nice surprise would it be for someone to get what they usually have to do for someone else done for them. This is a fantastic idea and just do it every once in a while and surprise everyone else. Ooh, I'm seeing some really good things here about uh, some good resources for daily inspiring messages. Thank you. I'm gonna, we're going to get all these information, uh, all these ideas and information later on. So thanks for sharing. Okay, number three, 33, is to bring in homemade goodies. How great is it for you to share homemade snacks and specialty dishes from your culture, your traditions? It's a great way to share new experiences. And here's the thing. I know some of us have old-time family recipes, and a lot of people don't like to share them, but what a wow would it be for you to share the recipe if asked. I mean, it's not like it's going out worldwide, and you can create an incredible wow by allowing someone else to be able to reproduce that. I mean, I have a neighbor who made the absolute best Jewish coffee cake in the world, and when she passed away, the idea and the recipe went with her. So unbelievable. I'm so upset that I can't have that coffee cake anymore. I wish she would have served it. So, you know, I mean, or shared it. Just help people by sharing the recipes if they ask. Number 34, here's a great one. If your team has been working their buns off, really giving their all, give them a little bit of surprise time off. What if? You took them out to lunch on a Friday afternoon and then gave them the rest of the day off just to go and pursue their hobbies or maybe do something with their pets, their dog, their cat. Some of you may have more unusual pets that you like to spend time with. But, you know, this is a fantastic way to say thank you once in a while for a team that's been going way over and above, which many of us do. How about this one? Start a club. 
Number 35 is to start a book, a movie, a show, any kind of club, because we connect heart to heart, not just on our work duties, but on our hobbies, our lives. Think of when you meet somebody, what do you say to them first? Not, hey, what's your job duties? No, it's where are you from? What do you like to do? This is how we connect. If you want to create team camaraderie and build team spirit, find out what shared hobbies you have and then start doing something about it so everyone can participate. Now, number 36 is to institute motivational meeting openers and closers. This is so huge. Think about all the meetings that you go to and think about what you hear first in the meeting room, even at the beginning of the meeting. Oh my goodness, you know, the traffic was horrible today. I hate meetings. Why are we even doing this? I don't know why we ever bother. Oh, it's so negative. We start our meetings off with these negative things and they go down from there. So you know what? If somebody wants to complain, they can do so outside the meeting room. But when they get inside the room and especially when the meeting begins, start with one to two minutes of people sharing something great that happened to them that day, that week, or any time recently. You won't believe what an upper it is to have them start that way rather than have them starting badly. Now number 37 is to decorate someone's desk or cubicle or office. Uh, do it upright on their birthday or their anniversary. Um, it's, it's just amazing what you can do. Now, we always get cards and things like that. But if we get a card and have everybody sign it, but then we also decorate their cubicle or their desk, put balloons, put ribbons, put all kinds of stuff again, what can you do to make that person feel even extra special, more than just a card could do? So if they're graduating, or they're getting married, or they have a birthday, or anything big like that, do it upright. Now number 38 is to make something better, easier, and faster. What this means is, if can you improve a process that everyone struggles with and share the improvement? For example, my daughter had to learn a very difficult piece of software at a financial company she was working at. And she didn't have to use it all the time. So every time she would learn it, she would not use it again for a while and then forget it and have to relearn it. So what she did was she created a PowerPoint for herself just to lay out the steps so that when she did it the next time, she opened the PowerPoint, she followed the steps and didn't lose time having to try to remember what to do. Well, a friend of hers saw it and said, hey, where'd you get that? I need that. I can't remember this either. Remember, if you're struggling with something, someone else probably is too. So she shared it with that woman. Then she started having that be shared. Everyone else started hearing about it. Pretty soon, management said to her, um, would you do this as a presentation to all the other departments? She was asked to share that because it helped everyone with something they were all struggling with. So remember, if you're struggling, someone else probably is too. Share your improvements with them. Number 39 is, can we do lunch? How about this? Invite someone you don't know or don't know well to lunch. You don't know how big a deal it is for people to have a sense of belonging to the group. And oftentimes, we don't even know everybody in our group. So pick someone out, maybe even one or two people, and all get together and start to get to know the members of your group and do that. Number 40. Recognize and praise someone's skills, acknowledgement, or accomplishments. Now, this is an important one for us to remember. Sometimes, especially if we're leaders and we're going to do something maybe at an, at an awards ceremony, I'm going to suggest that you don't wait till the awards ceremony, but do it quickly, but also be as specific as possible. One of the biggest things that research tells us about peer support and praise versus leadership or executive support and praise is that the executives don't sound like they really know what the person did. So it doesn't come from the heart. It comes more from a script they were handed by someone else at an award ceremony. So if you're going to give someone praise for something, be as specific as possible so they know you really know what they did and you know how wow it was and you will wow them by taking a personal interest in them and not just a generic interest. Number 41 is to get in with the people. 
I love this picture. And what this means is to get leaders on the front lines occasionally. You know, sometimes our leaders have been disconnected from the customer facing jobs that we have and the policies and how they're implemented or not very smoothly. So getting them on the front line, which Starbucks, by the way, does on a regular basis, helps them reconnect with the workers, reconnect with the customers, and it allows the people on the front line to talk to leaders they probably would never get a chance to be able to talk to otherwise. So go ahead and get your leaders on the front lines and reconnect them with everyone who's involved in that process of serving your customers. Number 42 is to create a brag board. I love this idea. Now you can put a bulletin board or other vehicle up to allow associates to brag on their families or friends or even their coworkers. You could put thank you notes to your coworker up on the board. You know, thank you Betty or thank you Susie or thank you Sandy for a great job on, you know, Friday morning for helping me with this. What better way? can we find to help us get to know each other better, brag on our families, and you know, if if you think someone's going to abuse it, just fill up the board, set a limit, and don't get upset if one person has to, you know, kind of use it a little bit more than others. It's all right. That's what it's there for. The best thing is to make sure everybody at every level is involved. Leaders participate as well as team members. And let you let you brag on each other and, and let everybody have a good time with that. Now, number 43 is to share the app love. Oh, are there, what, 3,759,213 apps out there? But some of them are just fantastic. If you found a great app, share it with someone. My husband got uh, one of his friends to share with him something called Gas Buddy. I don't know if you have that or if you know about that but it it's an app that will let you find the best price gas at any gas station in your local area it's awesome he even has one about golf my husband loves golf and he got a golf app that lets him see the course uh, track his progress see how many yards it is to the hole it's unbelievable so if you know that someone has an interest in something and you know of a great app that they would love and it's just the coolest thing create a while by sharing that information with them. In fact, if you know of any great apps, go ahead and put them into the chat box now and let us see what they are. We'll share it with everybody. Now here's another one. 44, I'm so happy to see you or hear from you. What this means is to very enthusiastically and cheerfully greet everyone in person, on the phone, everywhere. You know, one of the greatest compliments I have ever received is that people tell me that when they call me or they see me, I'm so excited to see them that they feel really special. They can hear it in my voice. If we're in person, they see it in my face. And I act like it's a long-lost friend. And I really do get excited. That's not fake. You don't have to fake it, but you need to put a little extra enthusiasm in your voice when you're answering the phone. In fact, I've done a couple of things, you know, uh, what do they call it? Caller ID. It's the best invention ever. Love it, love it, love it. Because there have been a couple of times some of my mastermind members, like for example, David Glickman. He's a mastermind member of mine. And he will call me. I'll see his name pop up. And instead of saying, hi, this is Sandy, or hey, David, how you doing? I will answer, David Glickman's office, how may I help you? <laughs> Every time I do it, to him or anybody else, they have to stop. They do a double take. Wait a minute, did I call my own office? And then we have a great laugh. So have fun with people. And act like you're happy to see them. I love the people at my doctor's office. In person, we joke around all the time. But when I call them on the phone, they are so deadpan. They act like they don't even know me. I actually recently, I've been going to them for 14 years, and recently asked the woman who answered the phone, this is Sandy Giroux, do you remember me? I mean, she's known me for 14 years. And her voice doesn't say that at all. So, you know, this is something that you can do. Just put a little extra enthusiasm into your greetings. 45 is to be the opposite. If no one else is doing something, you do it. If everyone else is doing something, then you do the opposite. 
I don't mean to pick on the construction industry, but I have to tell you that almost every single construction contractor that I have ever hired, my husband and I, has done the same thing. They don't call you back. They don't come in. They no show on the day they're supposed to be there. Or if they do show up, they're always late. They don't pay attention to what you had to say or how you want things done. You have to watch them like a hawk. And it's unbelievable. And then when they're done with their work, they are the most messy things in the world. And they don't clean up after themselves. Well, we one time had a gentleman come in and put in a tile floor in our bathroom. And when he was done, he mopped, vacuumed, and or swept and vacuumed and mopped the floor, wiped down the shower, the tub, the sinks, the commode, everything, and even swept our garage floor where he had cut the tiles and gotten some dust out there. I was amazed. He showed up on time. His work was great. He paid attention to and cared about our home. Unbelievable. So you know what? Don't let excuses hold you back. Well, all construction people are like that, so why do I have to be different? <sighs> Create a wow by being different. And Beth, I saw your note. You never do that to me. Next time you call me, you better watch out. <laughs> okay, let's go on to number 46. <clears throat> be sure that everything you do is of the highest possible quality. Now, I know we always say this, but when you have a chance to show your stuff, do it because extreme competence wows us no matter where it occurs. I mean here are just some examples. You might have seen some of these photos on the internet in email. This is a gentleman who takes photos. He's a surfer but instead of taking pictures of the waves from on top of them or from the shore he waits till he gets underneath them and wow look at that. Or how about this? You have to be an extremely competent diver to get this close to something that big. Or how about this? I don't even know what kind of physical prowess it takes for these people to do this. This is amazing. Or look at this. You've probably seen the 3D chalk art that's out there by email. These are flat photos or pictures, sorry, that people drew in chalk on a cement walk. But they look 3D. And this, this is weird, but it is so impressive. This is called cat painting. You may have never heard of this, but that extreme competence wows us. And by the way, I want to give a shout out to Kathy Angtil of Barker Orlando, Barker Specialty Orlando, who does my promotional products. I called her this morning with an emergency I needed in hours rather than days and she and her team came through I thought we were going to be lucky to get this done and out by Saturday and she came through in three hours Kathy and Adrian all of you rock that is what I'm talking about wows when someone comes to you your extreme competence shows through and you pull out all the stops love it love it love it now, number 47 is this, proudly proclaim your mission, vision, and values. Post them. Make them your promise to everyone who comes in contact with you. This was brought to my attention one time when I had to go to the hospital to get an x-ray. And right there on the door to the x-ray department, bam, was a sign that said the x-ray department's mission. You know, I cannot tell you how good I felt as a patient knowing that the x-ray department had their own mission statement to remind them of how to treat their patients and they lived up to it too so post your mission make it a promise and make sure that anyone and everyone who ever comes in contact with you knows that you are committed to delivering that kind of service number 48 change the conversation don't you just love this picture too <laughs> love this one and what this means is this get customers involved with helping you identify and create wows for them for example years ago when my husband and I lived in Rhode Island we went to buy a car we went to a Toyota dealership <clears throat> now the salesman as soon as we walked in the door took us pretty much by the hand and brought us over to this case where there were five trophies in the case and he said do you see those trophies yeah those are our president's award and only dealerships that have five out of five on every single survey every single customer all year long ever earn those trophies we want to get it again this year 
and I don't want to blow it for us. So would you do me a favor? And we said, what? He said, if at any point in our dealings together I ever do something that would cause you to give us less than a five on our evaluation, please tell me immediately so I can correct it. This changed everything. He set the expectation of what he wanted to provide for us and what we should do to ensure that he provided it. Not only that, it made us more comfortable in telling him if there was something that didn't quite go the way we wanted to and we could tell him right away he could fix it. What normally happens in these situations is you tick off your customer, they don't say a word, they leave without buying and you never hear from them again and you don't even know that you did something wrong or what you did at all. So you know what? Get your customers involved. Find out what will wow them. Tell them what you intend to do and ask them to help you do it. It is amazing how when you change the conversation, you can actually create more wows more consistently and make sure you're hitting your customers' hot spots. Now, number 49 is to be the wow in a world full of owls. And what I mean about this is things go wrong all the time. And a lot of times you may not even have been the cause, but you can create a wow by correcting something that someone else has done wrong. For example, when I was a realtor up in Rhode Island, I had some sellers they bought new construction. Three days before the closing, the contractor puts the wrong floor in in the kitchen and the right floor is back ordered. So they can't even put it in right away. Now they're going to miss the closing. Well, the buyers of the home had given up the lease on their apartment. They had to move into the home the sellers were selling. The sellers couldn't move in because without the kitchen floor in, they couldn't get a certificate of occupancy. So I called the realtor for the contractor and said, look, they have nowhere to go. You need to put them up for three days and at least let them have a place to stay so that they're not going to be homeless for three days waiting for your mistake to be corrected. They refused. But my philosophy was no one that ever works with Sandy Giroux was going to come out worse than they went in. So I put them up for three days in a hotel nearby. Now I'm not so great. All I'm saying is I was not going to let the right thing not be done just because the person who caused the problem wasn't going to do it. it. It didn't cost me that much. They came to the closing with tears in their eyes because I arranged for them, the con construction guys, to let them at least move their belongings into the house. I put them up for three days and they were intact so that after three days after the closing they were able to move into their home and everything was fine but you know it's just a matter of doing the right thing no matter who caused the problem and finally whew, we come to number 50 and that is that creativity rules this is just something to keep in mind whatever you do add a dash of creativity add your own personality put your own twist on things when I see creative things like what are on the screen now I just can't even tell you how wonderful it makes me feel to know there are creative people like this in the world so don't do anything home ho hum or same old same Old. Put your personality on it. Put it in email signatures. Put it on emails and messages. Make it in your demeanor. Put it into your welcomes, your phone greetings, your in person greetings. Everything that you do should be a wow. Ask yourself, what kind of person do I want to be? What is my wow going to be? Extreme competence, extreme courtesy, extreme kindness, whatever it is, extreme creativity. You can even do more than one, but whatever it is, please do it consistently and you will be known as a wow person too. So, these are 50 ideas for you to take and hopefully run with. I hope that they have given you all kinds of ideas to be able to turn your workplace into a wow place. Now, I am going to make a little shameless plug because most of you already know today is my book launch day. And if you're so inclined to go over to Amazon and get it, I tried to put a link in here, but something didn't work right. But you can go to Amazon and search for Turn Your Workplace Into a Wow Place. If you're going to buy anyway, if you would do it today, I love you forever. I love you forever anyway because you're here right now. But there are also excerpts at my uh, web website for the book, which is wowplacebook.com. I have a big goal to try to get to number one on Amazon today. So if we can do that, that'd be great. If not, 
it doesn't matter. I am so pleased you came. Let's connect. I am everywhere on the internet. I have a Facebook page. If you would go and like that, it's there, Wow Place. I'm on Twitter. I'm on LinkedIn. You can email me. I have a blog in the bottom left hand corner of your screen. You can see www.wowplace.com. Completely free, periodic updates and posts to try to give you more wow ideas all the time. And if you ever want to talk to me about speaking for your group, and thank you, by the way, many of my clients are on here, and you've already had me speak for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You. Um, what you can do is you can go to thewowplace.com and see it there. Valerie, I see your question. Yes, you can go to Amazon through Give Kids Safe Shelter. That's a great idea. It's a board I'm on. If you go in through Give Kids Safe Shelter and just click on the Amazon link there and look for me, then you can do that and a portion of your proceeds will go to help uh, at-risk children who are being abused and neglected in Osceola County where near where I live so thank you thank you thank you for joining us you're gonna get an email after this that contains the link to the handout and the replay I love you all now go forth and Wow Thank you.